Welcome to Baker's Insight. I'm Dan DeRocha, and today we're in our test bakery here at Erica Record. With me, our test baker, Austin. We're going to be tackling uh, a cookie that has perhaps a very contentious history. The Italians lay claim to it. The French have, for short, put their arms around it and made it renowned. But there's no contention in its current day status as one of the most sought after cookies, the French macaroon. Or is it macaron? Macaroon, macaron, spelling, pronunciation, doesn't matter. The, the cookie, Everyone's going to be mad at me about that. <laughs> the, the cookie has, uh, from beginning to end, to, the, to, to becoming a sandwich, has many layers, uh, many customizable, many ways of approaching the cookie. It's Everyone thinks that their way is the correct way. We're going to show you our way. <laughs> it may not be the only, it's not the only way for sure, that's undoubtedly, but it is a method, and it's a method that we know that works. We found the way that works for us best in our environment. Um, it's very, very mixing specific, oven specific. It's a very temperamental dough, so. So let's go on, this one is gonna be, this one might be a little tough, but we're gonna get through it, right? We can do it. All right, so first things first. Ingredients. Right here, we actually have confectioner sugar and almond flour. What I did was sipped the confectioner sugar. Very important. No lumps, please no lumps. That's gonna affect the end product big time. But basically you take this dry mix and we add liquid egg whites to it and you make almost a paste and that's the base of your recipe and then after that we're going to take granulated sugar and water cook that to 240 degrees softball stage and then after that once that reaches 240 we'll have some egg whites whipped up and ready to go and then stream it in italian meringue so we're making that's a meringue right so that's the basis of the meringue italian and meringue. we're going to take the italian method which there's there's two other methods correct french and swiss okay and, we're, and why are we picking the Italian? Any it's, particular reason? Just it's, it has the most. It's the strongest. It has the best body to it. I thought we drew straws. Okay, well uh, that's a that's actually a good reason. I would have just picked one at random. No, 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 because the French already got the name, so the Italians get the meringue. Sounds good. Sorry, right, let's get let's get right to it. mixed our dry ingredients with the egg whites, so now we have a nice paste. This will be the base of the macaroons. Now it's time to make the meringue, but first we're going to cook the sugar. All right. Induction burner? Induction burner. Water. Water and sugar. So um, we also have a laser thermometer, so we're going to get uh, a lot more of an accurate read. Uh, you could also use a probe thermometer, the electrical uh, digital probe thermometer. Uh, those ones are nice too. They have timers on them, but uh, this is what we have. This is just as accurate. Worst case, worst case scenario. Could you use like a traditional, you know, you know, a, you know, thermometer? You got you're hanging out on your shoulder kind yeah, of thing. You could. The temp is not accurate. I don't know if it's going to go as high as you want on some of them. Uh, you can get a very inexpensive candy thermometer that is the really long, tall one that clip onto the side. Those work work, work well, well too. Okay. Yeah. Some but for our those. purposes, the uh, the laser the laser should work fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No of problem. Course. Of right. course. Anything special about this? It's just basically sugar, water. Sugar, water, and most importantly, everything needs to be very clean. Any sort of grease, dirt, any smudges, anything that's in the... Make sure that you wash this very well, as well as the bowl. Because whipping the egg whites and cooking the sugar, any imperfections are going to completely ruin this. Impurities. Very, very... Very temperamental. All so, right. so we're gonna start with this. Put this in. Add the sugar in there. What temp do we want to get to? 240 is the final temp. Okay. So once this hits about 225, is when we will start whipping the egg whites. So by the time this hits 240, the egg whites will be nice and high. So when you add the sugar in, boom, it'll be a beautiful meringue. Right, so it's 10 minutes or so, give yeah. or take, at least okay. on our burner. Yep. And I have a very clean rubber spatula that I'm just gonna to use to mix in the beginning. Because once this sugar starts to bubble and boil, don't touch it anymore. Because then you'll affect it. One good thing that they always tell you about sugar and water is agitation promotes crystallization. We don't want any crystallization. We want this to stay a nice liquid, 
the more you mix it around once it starts boiling, the more, the more common that you're going to get crystallization. Maple syrup candy. Ah. Uh, so, yeah, so about 10 minutes. Let's wait and see. All right, the meringue's done. How do we know it's done? Well, once you pour the sugar in, you want to let it whip and you want to see the, the meringue actually come up the bowl. But the most important thing is to feel when the bowl is cooled again. Right. So that would, that would explain there's no timer. There's no timer. You're just kind of like massaging the bowl occasionally. No, if, if, if you were a company, obviously, or a bakery or a restaurant that does these all the time, then you get a system down. But uh, in our case, in our case, check the bowl. Foolproof. Check the bowl. Cup the bowl. Okay. So going forward now. Um, also, if you wanted to color these, we would have added the color into the egg whites when they were whipping. That's the best way, because if you try to add the color after this, uh, it's going to be too much mixing and stirring, and you'll basically be deflating the product. Uh, also, in this paste, um, I did not use the blanched almond flour, we used regular almond flour. Uh, if you wanted the blanched almond flour, that would basically be aiding you when you color the macaroons, and that's how you're going to get a good color. This, you'll, there'll be speckles, and you'll see that at the end. I made them like this because, honestly, you get a little more, you get more flavor when you use the regular almond flour. The blanched almond flour doesn't have as much flavor. Alright, here we go. So now, this is the uh, folding of the meringue into the paste? Yep. So, all you want to do, it's going to look like it's never going to fold in, but you'll see very quickly that everything's going to be okay. It's like fluff. Marshmallow fluff. Do we have to be careful at all at anything from this point? Why are we not just throwing this in a mixer? Um, a mixer is going to be too rough on it. Um, that'll probably deflate it a lot more. The folding motion that you're getting here is folding everything together. And uh, that's how you're going to get a lot more of a nicer finished product. Because if you deflate it too much here, when we deposit it, it's actually going to spread a lot more and that's when you get gigantic macro. If you were going to be piping this, you bring it to a certain point that you know you're comfortable with. We're going to bring it to right before that point because we're going to be putting it into a depositor. So it's still going to get worked a little bit more inside the machine. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to pour it in now. Traditionally, this would have been run through a piping bag. Today, we're going to be using a nice piece of equipment. It's our tabletop depositor from Mono. This one is called the Epsilon. Deposited. Deposited. We baked. We baked. What did we do? Baking process for us. Because, like we said, everyone's baking process may be oven specific, temperature specific, so on and so forth. But what did we do? We have found that with our oven, the best thing to do was I baked it at 293 for about four minutes. And that's when you're going to get that oven spring that's going to give this nice shape that you get. And I dropped the temperature down to about 266 for another five minutes. And what you're getting there is the low temperature that's gonna basically bake the inside without giving you color and drying it out. Excellent. So, this is what we would consider a perfect macro. Mm -hmm. This is what you're looking for. You want a pale color, you, or not a pale color, but you want the pale bake, because the pale bake is gonna give you the wonderful colors that you get here without that brown, golden brown on one side or the other side or all around or too much color. Here, these are dried out. They were left in the oven for too long. The color is not much different. It's a little dark. It's got a little bit of, it's got a tan. And when you break it, it crumbles. If you take this nice one and you break it, it's nice and soft inside still. So it's gonna be great. Over here, this is a good example of what happens when you put them in too early. Because you, once you deposit them, you wanna let them sit on the rack for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, until you can touch them 
and the actual batter is not gonna stick to your finger because you're gonna feel that shell. And then once you have the shell and you put it in the oven, it's gonna rise all as one. Instead of like this, which you'll see in a close-up, it rises like this because instead of getting that shell, you put it right in, part of the cookie's gonna stick to the pan and rise like this. And that steam and that batter is gonna try to bake in any way that it can. The, the, it's gonna find the weakest point. Mm -hmm. What happened with these boards over here? And then these ones, as you can see, we have bubbles here where there was air trapped in the actual cookie. Now there's one way to prevent that, and after I deposit it, or after you pipe, or after you're done, uh, right before you let them sit, you take the pan, and just hit it underneath. Just hit the pan underneath, you're gonna release some of those air pockets so that they're gonna bake as one, and you're not help gonna- it, Help it, help it kinda settle a little bit better. better. <clears throat> All right, so the cookie in itself is a tasty treat, but what do we, what do we see usually? It's a sandwich. Yes. And that's what we got in, the, in, the, in this case right here. And it looks like you got a little creative here. Yep, you get to have fun with this. You get to have fun. You can flavor the uh, you can flavor the cookie, you can flavor the filling. Like I said earlier, when you're making the, mer making the meringue, that's when you want to add the coloring. If you're adding the coloring, when you're folding it in, you're deflating it too much trying to mix the color in. And you're too focused on getting the color evenly distributed. You put the color in then, and then also, with these, as you can see, I had fun with the fillings. I made a raspberry cream. Actually, they're over here. I made a raspberry cream filling. I made a hazelnut chocolate filling. And this one's a white chocolate uh, lemon ganache. So any sort of ganache, uh, a thick jam, like a hero gel or a, a baking gel, those are gonna hold their shape. You can't just put jelly in it. But like a fruit jam, a fruit, uh, a fruit spread, ganache, buttercream, any of those things. And you get, that's where you get real creative then. Yeah. Then you can fill it. Be generous with the filling. And then put it down so that you're gonna see that filling in between the cookies. So, that's a beautiful background. A lot of fun, a lot of different things you can do. Also, these, these really are amazing. They, they look amazing, they taste amazing. I had a few off camera. We, we showed a few problems that we you potentially can have, but I'm sure there's more. What, what else should people be on the lookout for? Uh, I guess the biggest problems that I usually see are either in the meringue and the mixing or in the oven and the baking. Uh, like, like we said, we spent a lot of time kind of playing with our oven, making sure that the temperature was right, the time was right. Uh, if you bake it too low or too hot or too long or too short, you're going to see issues like that. And they're very delicate pro product. And then even even if the even if the baking is right, the meringue may still have been off or too, not not a good enough peak, things like that. So you're gonna find a bunch of issues. Uh, it's a very delicate product again. So collapsed, underbaked, underbaked, or maybe poor structure of meringue. Yep. Okay. Uh, if they're blowing up, blowing up, it, it could be not enough rest time or too much or enough rest time. Temperature's too hot. All right, that concludes today. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for making macaroons with me. Uh, I've had a lot of sugar. I think it's time for a nap, right? Yeah, definitely. I hope everyone is on their way to making their very own world-famous French macarons. For today's recipe and for more, please visit ericavacord.com. Hope to see you next time at Baker's Insight.